Hello and welcome to another Business Spotlight interview and today I am joined by Jock Gardner of Alba Equity and TMM Executive. So thank you very much Jock, how are you doing today? I'm very good, the sun shines in Aberdeen so all must be well. <laughs> good, good, I don't hear that very often, <laughs> when, <laughs> but the sun shining in Aberdeen. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> good to hear it's out today. That's excellent. Good. Um, so, Jock, um, tell tell us a little bit about yourself and the businesses that you're associated with then. So I um Jock Gardner, um uh trained chartered accountant, can come back onto that later. Done a bit of investment management in my time, but current business um interests are our portfolio approach, relatively wide and varied, but the two key ones. Uh, to focus on our Alba Equity, which is an angel investor group uh, set up here in Aberdeen, but covering investment um, throughout the whole of Scotland, which we set up, myself and two colleagues set up uh, about four years ago now, uh, with a view to being able to provide capital from high net worth individuals to support growing early stage, high growth uh, businesses in Scotland. So that is um, up and running and, and going well, and I can cover a wee bit more about that as, as we do the interview. My other um, primary interest is as chairman of a local executive recruitment business called TMM, um, originally founded as Thorpe Malloy, uh, and that business is now celebrating its 25th year. And um, in recent times, we're looking to, uh, I guess, grow the business further and wider um, both in terms of the roles we, they cover, including executive search, which we, we set up a division in that a couple of years ago. So it's a good barometer of, I guess, largely the northeast economy, but um, you know, wider Scotland as well. With with the advent of uh, of modern technology, we can reach we can reach further these days. So they are my two uh, primary business interests. Excellent, excellent. Um, so um. Who is the first person that comes to mind when you think of uh, success then? Or or maybe actually, if I was to rephrase it, maybe, um, who, who's maybe inspired you then? Or what's inspired you to um, get to where you are right now? That's a good question. And to be honest, it's a very easy answer in my case. Um, so thank you for asking that one. The, the answer to that is the one and only Alec Ferguson. Um, the ex-manager uh, of Aberdeen Football Club. Uh, and not because of him, but but Aberdeen Football Club brought me to this city effectively uh, when it came to deciding where to go to university back uh, in, in 1983. They'd just won in Gothenburg, which the 40-year celebrations are have taken place of. And, um, you know, led by Alec Ferguson, who at the time would have been 35, 36 years old, uh, but what a leader that guy was, an absolute winner, inspired loyalty, inspired a winning mentality, um, but also worked with his, uh, you know, worked with his team and the players and the, and the board of the club and the fans, etc., to create a, you know, an unstoppable force at the time. So being a, being a, being an Aberdeen fan and also, you know, now being, being a businessman, I've, I've read all Fergie's books, etc. So not quite his, not quite he's taught me everything um, I know about business, far from it. But at the same time, he is an absolute inspiration uh, to me. And, you know, great to, great to see that he's, you know, still still down um, in the boardroom at, uh, at Old Trafford every week type thing with, with Manchester United these days. So uh, easy question, easy answer. Alec Ferguson is, is, is my inspirational success, success sort of mentor, for want of a better word. Fantastic. I, I totally agree with you. Absolutely. Absolutely agree with you there. Um, you've read his books then. So that have you read um the one leading? Yes, I have indeed. Yeah, what, no, I have what, indeed. Excellent. What what's what was your biggest learning from that book? And could you maybe tell us how you've maybe implemented that into your into how you work? Yeah, I think I think it's about, you know in simple terms, setting setting achievable but very ambitious goals and, and sticking to achieving them and having the right people round about you to help you do that because you can't do everything yourself. And interestingly enough, at the 
um, you know, the, going back to the Gothenburg celebrations last week, um, you know, guys like Archie Knox, who was, was Fergie's number two, you know, he took the coaching. Um, he took the players day to day. Fergie, yes, absolutely was there, was there every day. But, you know, he, he stuck to the things he was best at type thing, you know, in terms of managing the board, um, giving, you know, giving the pep talks to the players, looking to, you know, sign new players, et cetera, and let, and let I would say, the day-to-day type operation be done by others. And I think, you know, I, I've kind of, not, not because it was Alec Ferguson that did that, but some of those traits in, in business and in management and in people management are so important. You know, stick, stick to what you're good at. Hire people who are better than you at certain things because it makes your life easier and makes you much more effective. So I've kind of, I guess, through my business career, taken that on board and realised, try to realise this, you know, quickly the things you're good at doing and focus on them and harness them and the things you either don't like doing so much or are not so good at doing. Find people who you can work with, trust, be part of a team with to, uh, you know, to focus on those aspects. And that's kind of been, been one of my ways of, I guess, you know, doing my how I go about business in in the various guises, um, you know, both in Alba and in in TMM, is playing to people's strengths. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Achievable but ambitious goals. I've wrote that down. And yes, yeah, surround yourself with a good team and people that you also said that are uh, better than you. Absolutely, some big learnings from that book. I think it's an underrated book as well. Leading, it's very good, very good book. Um, just like Alex Ferguson, though, um, you know, he had, he, he had amazing, uh, success, incredible, yeah. arguably the greatest football manager of all time, but he went through a period after he left Aberdeen and, uh, went to Manchester United, he went through a period where he really struggled to get any success and was close to, um, mm-hmm. apparently close to getting sacked at Manchester United, but turned it around. So, um, and in regards to yourself, then during uh, has there been any sort of periods, or can you give us any sort of examples of challenge that you faced as a business owner? Then, yeah, I think I think you you live and you learn through your career, and you learn an awful lot more from things that haven't gone right um, than than you know from the successes. And whilst it's right to celebrate success. One of the things that, um, you know, that Fergie always did and everybody said this about him was once something had been won, that was it. You move on to the next thing. The cup goes into the cabinet and you move on to next cup, the next season, etc. And I think that's, you know, that goes uh, that goes into business as well. And certainly my own um, history of, you know, investment management in, in, in investing in private companies through various different uh, businesses that I, you know, was involved in at the time before founding Alba Equity is so true that you know you when you make a successful exit that's great investors are all happy they you know make a return on it, um, but the reality is you're on to the next one and you're only as good as as the last one etc. So the one the the challenge I think is and the and the and the area to learn from are when investments don't work out and and they fail which does happen you're almost you're not doing your job in investment right if you don't get failures because it's a risk it's a risk investment game um and the failures are, are, are absolutely painful for a whole heap of reasons you know for for investors because they lose money for staff because they they lose jobs for stakeholders because you know there's uh, reputational damage there's uh, bad debts etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's and that's and that's very difficult um but at the end of the day it's it's business and it's life so i think you know one of one of the key learnings i take is from those situations where um where things haven't worked out and that and they can happen for a lot of different reasons um the one area that uh, that is really hard to reconcile um yourself with and i find very difficult is and it fortunately hasn't happened to me, to me often, but it has happened. Is when dishonourable behaviour takes place, when you you know you back management teams, uh, business plan, and if that fails because of market changes or 
you know, situations that are out of control, but people put, you know, full effort into things, for want of a better word, you can live with that. I mean, it's not nice, but you can live with it. It's when people are dishonorable or dishonest or um, or situations like that, which which can which can and do occur. That becomes very, very difficult to handle type thing. And I think lesson lesson learned from all of that, I think, is business is all about people. You might have good technologies, you might have good customers, you might have good business plans, etc. But people make or break businesses. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, that very interesting there. Uh, you talked about uh, people who might be dishonest or dishonourable. Um, what what sort of strategies or or um, things did you put in place to overcome? that kind of challenge yeah i know that and that's a good question and um one of the one of the and part of this takes on to the the recruitment um business whereby and 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 diligence on investing in people and investing in businesses that i'm a great believer in gut feel as a as a general point in in life and in business that you know you have your instinct tends to be something you should listen to and something that uh, over time you develop and um, hopefully get a good nose for for judging things. But instinct and gut feel alone need to be supplemented by um, more, I guess, scientific or rigorous due diligence. So combinations of, um, you know, diligence by asking as many people around uh, an individual or a, a business as possible and doing detailed uh, in-depth you know reviews character references prior uh, employment etc and really digging into that is is one thing and alongside it and again I used to be quite skeptical about this as 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 people will uh, no doubt testify to who listen to this interview about things like um uh, psychometric testing and and team uh, dynamic testing of of individuals and of um you know of of teams but actually if done properly and done well these sort of tools can i think definitely alleviate risk and whilst you know if people if certain people are going to be fraudsters for want of a better of a word you can't necessarily detect that from a psychometric test, but at least if there are signals of certain types of behavior, it does alert you to the probability or possibility of of such behaviors. So, um, you know, I think I think that you know detailed assessment and as much digging as possible is is important. And I guess you know, going on to the investment side um, at Alba Equity, where the the types of businesses we and our, our members are investing in our really early stage, high risk, but potentially very high growth businesses. And with, with often the case that uh, founders are highly smart individuals with, with specific knowledge of their own technology or their own kind of IP or their own um, specific ideas. Um which is great because you need to have that entrepreneurial spirit to be able to back. But it's then how do you assess the ability of that individual and those formative teams to be able to take it on to be a, a successful business rather than just a great idea? And so using some of those skills, that experience does help in, in, assessing, um, in assessing opportunities. Okay. Um, very, very interesting what you just said there. Yeah. So, okay. Um, can you maybe tell us a little bit more about um, the kind of qualities that you look for in employees and, and, and how do you foster a positive and productive work environment then? Yeah. So that's a good question. Um, I mean, ultimately it's about teamwork. It's not, it's about, you know, it's about the we rather than the me. Um, and that's not easy with, with all individuals. So it's being able to kind of assess who, who can't, you know, you need leaders absolutely, you know, in the Ferguson mold, you absolutely need that, the, you know, the driving force. You're never going to, you're never going to run or develop a good business by committee and debating society. Um, so, you know, you need, you need strong leadership, but that strong leadership 
has to be, I think, in, in my view anyway, very much part of a, a team ethos rather than an autocratic approach. Um, you get the best out of people with openness, working together, developing, you know, younger members of the team, putting people into also challenging situations to see whether they can handle it. Um, you know, I, I hear, you know, again, I can going back to the, you know, the football analogy, speaking to some of the, you know, the ex players of that Ferguson's team, um, you know, in Gothenburg and, and, and around that time who were, you know, teenage, teenage guys at that time and were, you know, put through the mill, but at the same time, you know, learnt to become men and winners at an early stage in a in an environment that was, you know, harsh, not in a negative or a bullying way, probably would be described perhaps as that a bit these days, but actually it was all about team spirit and developing a camaraderie and a will to win, etc. And I think that is really, really important. And you know, particularly, I guess in this current day, some of the some of the activity and way of doing things is Aberdeen team would just be back page, front page, and every page of newspapers these days for just being seen unacceptable. And I think, you know, we've got to be careful in life, the, you know, without wanting to get into debates on woke society and things like that. But there is an element here of, of you know, getting in, digging in hard, working hard as a team and, and also successful businesses have that edge to them and and will to win that you're not going to get through, oh, it's five o'clock, we all have to go home now because we've worked, worked seven and a half hours and we're all tired, so let's go to, you know, to do all the sort of nice things in life and down the down the pens and all that sort of thing. So I think there is that, but you do that best by very much an encouraging, positive uh, environment that does have you know, winning um, and strong leadership at the top of the tree that filters down to filters down to throughout the team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I could use the Alex Ferguson analogies all day, and I'm actually going to use one for this question again because even though again he was the infamous um, hair dryer treatment, um, mm -hmm. but. A lot of players that you read these days will say he also put the arm around the shoulder as well if yeah. they needed to talk to anyone or any. Now, have you ever, um, you know, when we were talking about the team and everything, have you ever had to use that approach in, in your business life at all? Yeah, I, I'm much better at the supportive arm around the shoulder rather than the, the blast furnace. <laughs> or a hairdryer. I think. I think I, it was. It became oh, a hairdryer. Sorry, sorry. I was then. Sorry, I was going to. I was then going to say. Um, has it? Has it then worked? So sorry about that. So yeah. have you used it? And then has it worked? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So that. So that. That it was the blast furnace at the Tawdry. It became the hairdryer when Fergie became more refined down at Manchester. Um. So that's not my natural style, and it would only be on uh, you know number of you know one one hand and a couple of fingers to, had to do that because it, it doesn't come naturally uh, to me personally but but if if wronged um or if if uh you know really lack of effort or whatever then on occasion i've had to go down that route i much prefer the arm around the shoulder the try to explain the you know the, not the error of the ways but okay this happened but let's pick you up again and find a way to not be the victim. That's important. You know, the, the sort of culture of victimhood is a, is a dangerous one. So, you know, I'm against that. Um, so it's how do you, how do you support people out of that sort of feelings of, you know, negativity and, and feeling down and et cetera, to be able to pull them back up and get them back on, you know, back on the wagon or back on the horse or whatever you call it. So I think round the shoulder is a good, good way of doing it. Um, and also recognizing that every individual's different. So some people, you know, might need the boot up the backside to get them going. Other people are a bit more sensitive. So you've got to tailor your approach to different individuals. You've got to tailor it to a one-to-one -one, from a one-to-one -one approach to a team environment, etc. And I think that's about, 
you know, it's now, it's about reading the room, it's about reading individuals, etc., which you only get through experience and uh, working with people to know how to get the best out of them, I think, you know? A yeah. lot of it can't be taught, a lot of it is instinctive and gut feel, but then you can refine it um, and know, and know you know, how to use different tools in different ways. Excellent, excellent. Um, thanks, thank you, Jock. Um, I've got one last question for you. All right, and then uh, we'll wrap things up here. And my last question is: is um, if you could uh go back, maybe even just four years when you first started Alba Equity, sure. you know, if you could give yourself advice back then, <laughs> what would mm-hmm. that advice be? It's a good question. Um, jokingly, but true, because I'm. Uh, it's not my forty. Is um, be much more IT savvy. <laughs> but you know, because uh, just my era, perhaps, and my lack of interest in the subject. Um, but actually, what 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 I have learned over the four years since we sent Alba. So it was not long into it that we. You know, obviously the COVID uh, pandemic came along, so we we'd, um, we'd we were fledgling. I think we'd maybe done two investments, made two investments at that time, and used to have um, used to have meetings in a, a sort of a, a room in a coffee shop here in Aberdeen that members would come along to to listen to the listen to the, the companies present to us, and then all of that changed for obvious reasons, and we wondered actually. Is it, uh, is this the end of it? Because who knows what's going to happen in the pandemic. But actually, um, what happened is we did all the meetings on Zoom. It proved a brilliant medium for being able for companies to, um, you know, present their story for members to dial in to record it, like we're doing here today. So that you couldn't meet, meet that time slot. You could watch it in the evening, um, you know, after the news or the football or Coronation Street or whatever you watch on the, you know, on the telly in the evening. So IT, the, the benefit of being able to do it with two other guys, one of whom's smart with IT is that he can do all the Zoom introductions and all that, which I still have got no idea of doing. So if I was asking, say to my younger self or even four years ago is be more IT savvy, but at the same time, I get by. Um, I think that's probably I mean, joking apart, but it's a major, it's a major point of it. On the on the other on the other thing, I think we'd on the other anything else. Um, it's hard it's hard to say on Alba because if somebody had we any great ambitious target for Alba of we'll do X investments or we'll bring on Y number of members. Because it is a member organization, it is not, it's a cottage industry, I describe it as rather than a hard nosed business. We want to make good investments. We do want good investors and we want it to be a success. Um, but it's not like running a business business like, you know, I did in the past at Maven Capital or I assist the, the you know, the team with it, TMM, where they are businesses as such. So in the context of Alba, if somebody had said, You'd have eight investments, sixty-five members, and collectively, those investments would have, from private individuals, would have uh, would total over two and a quarter million pounds, supported by significantly larger sums from Scottish Enterprise and other and other firms. I think we'd all say, "Nah, it's never going to do that," etc. So it just shows you what can be done by just cracking on slowly and working away at uh, working away at it. Um, I'm not sure if that answered your question. Oh no, it did. It did. Yeah. It did, and that's it. I think. I think you just kind of summed it up there. You know, just keep working at it. Just keep working at it. And again, you talked about, um, you know, that having those ambitious but achievable goals. And I think you know that's a nice way to sort of round off the interview. You know, so just keep working at it. You know, again, message to everyone out there: keep working at it and have ambitious but achievable goals so thank you very much jock it's been it's been a great interview thank you very much for your time thoroughly enjoyed it mark all right thank you very much for watching all the best bye now